everybody. It's Christine coming to you live from the Cards by Christine studio here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Yay! We have the celebration Hoorah Rah class that is starting right now from the comfort of your own home, just like I am here all by myself. <laughs> I finished up Monday and it has been like a crazy long weekend for me. I feel like I haven't been live with you since like forever, but it was only Friday. So if you remember on Friday, we made that awesome fat bottom bag that um, I had gotten the idea from Bonnie. We also made the sour cream container. I feel like that was Friday. <laughs> so um, I still haven't drawn a winner from that one for the liking and the sharing, but I am happy to announce that I did do a drawing for the, which one was it? It was for the Ladybugs stamp set. Um, I think I did that class or that Facebook Live on Wednesday. Melissa Madsen, you are the winner of that Ladybug um, stamp set. So Karen Wetstein, you won the first one I did and I haven't drawn for Thursday and Friday yet. So I'm still trying to give some people some time to like and comment and share. So if you're tuning in now or any point through the this live class, I really appreciate it when you share what I'm sharing with you. If you could share it with your friends, that would be awesome. Every time I do a Facebook Live, I'm gonna be doing a drawing for cards or for a stamp set or something from my stash. And I have a bunch of stuff that I want to give away over the next course of a month, I think. We're gonna be doing Facebook Lives every weekday for I think until April 30th. So um, the new directive is that we're supposed to be working from home or safer from home until April 30th. So I just got direction from the powers of be, that be at my work that we're working from home until April 30th. So um, yeah, so my goal is to do a Facebook Live with you every day. And, and some of those though, they're gonna actually be classes. Like tonight is a class, it's the Celebration Who Rah Rah class, and I'm gonna be going through how to make the four cards for class. I had 17 people sign up for that class, or for this class, isn't that awesome? Super, super, super excited for that. So my mom, um, oh, I, should, I don't know if I should say this or not, but <laughs> she, she helped me <laughs> get stuff together. <laughs> so, um, uh, so it was a lot. Um, 17 kits times four cards was a little bit of work. So normally when you come to class, you do all the die cutting and all of the embossing. And so because of the card kits, uh, that needed to be done ahead of time. So uh, there's a little bit of work involved, but I had all of those kits out there for pickup today. So super excited. I'm, I'm just thank you for the support and the love. I'm hoping that some of you that signed up for this class are able to join me live now and make sure you say hi, tell me where you're watching from or you know what, how excited you are to be here with me for the celebration hoorah rah class. Um, normally I would have a little bit of snacks and um, wine probably to share with you because this is a, the last class of celebration time. So super excited for that. But um, it is celebration time. It is March 30th. Tomorrow's the 31st. So tomorrow is the last day for celebration. And that means that with a $50 purchase or a $100 purchase, you get a free item. And I have the book here. I could flip down in a little bit just to to show you what that is. So uh, we'll go through that in a little bit. I'm also gonna share with you all the different things that I used to design the cards and uh, what stamp sets I used, what dies were used, just everything. So if there's something that catches your eye, and I know some of you placed orders to get your card kits for free and some of you bought the the kits. Um, if you're on my team, you're, you know, maybe you see something, you can buy it through yourself. That's awesome too. So um, that's great. I also want to remind everybody that I do have adhesives for sale and I mentioned that last week and I've had a couple sales and so I have a bronze garden hose container which is outside my back door which is a perfect pickup drop off point so if anybody's needing some liquid glue, tear and tape, uh, tape runner, dimensionals, I have a whole basket full in stock here so just send me a message, let me know if you need something and we'll figure out how, you know, when it works to put it out there and you can just come pick it up and you don't even have to see me. You don't have to see anybody. <laughs> we'll put it out there. So um, also I wanted to say that I still have my shopping spree board. It's back here. I have it kind of tucked away. So this ends tomorrow. If you place a $50 order with me through tomorrow, which is celebration, I am doing a drawing for a $25 shopping spree or a half off item. I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe like nine squares left to fill out. 
if somebody ordered like today or for this class, I'm just randomly picking numbers for you instead of asking you what number you want. So I haven't been forgetting. So Carla, you gave me an order for class um, the last time and Angela, you did too. So I just want you to know that I'm putting your name on the board and I think that on Wednesday, when I do a Facebook Live, that I am going to, I'm just refreshing my page, I'm gonna do the drawing live and pick the number and we'll see who wins, it's so exciting. Even if the board isn't full, I will do the drawing. So I always do that, even if it's half full, I would have done the drawing, so um, that's exciting. Also, I put a post out there about catalogs and um, if you don't have catalogs or don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator that you work with, I would love to earn your business. I will get you catalogs if you need them. I actually had somebody reach out to me, um, I think Friday, and uh, I just dropped them off. Today when I was out, I had to get to work for something and I ran a quick errand and it was on the way, so I just left them there. So if you're local, I can make sure I get your catalogs to you if you need them, or if you are not local, I can pop them in the mail for you. So that's super cool. I also, at the end of this class, I'm gonna go through what I have coming up for my next online classes. I also will show you my schedule. So. Oh, I Saturday for like four hours I went through and I tried to work on the schedule to see what I can do for online classes and live classes. And so I'll flip down for that just to do a quick flip of that so you can see. Um, let me just see here. I want to see if I can get in here just to make sure I can see that we're live and everybody's, oh yeah, it's here. Good, good, good. Diane's there, Lisa's there, Gay J, Angela. So the comments are hidden and I do not know why, how to fix it. Well, I don't know if anybody else is having that problem, Angela, but um, there's probably a button that you can click to unhide them. So um, if I don't know if Diane or Jay or Lisa, if you want to reference in there, if you can see the comments or not, but I can definitely see the comments. Um, oh, Lisa says swipe left. <laughs> Thanks. Good deal. You see, we're all working together. Okay. So let me flip down and I have my schedule here. I know it's probably really hard to see, but hey, if you want me to send this to you because you're not in my email group, oh yeah, you can't even read that. But I do wanna point out like a lot of this red here are gonna be online classes just basically because for the month of April, I really can't do anything in person. But our safer at home goes through till April 24th at this point and uh, President Trump said till April 30th. So I don't know how I'm gonna do the last little bit here, but. We're gonna keep going with the online for now. So um, hopefully that works and we stay connected and we're all happy and oh, as happy as we can be. But look at these beautiful cards. So what I'm gonna go through for this class is I'm gonna walk through these different cards, what I used from the celebration, what I used from the annual catalog, so that you can see what I used and how I put them together. These are the celebration catalogs. This was the first release, this was the second release, and there was a third release last Tuesday, which included products from the annual catalog, like the Butterfly Duet Punch, there was the Dino paper, there was some woven heirlooms paper, there was, I don't know, a bunch of things, and I never even printed it off, so, um, but there, you can always see that online at Stampin' Up's website, but for tonight, what I did is I pulled in the Gangs All Mirror for this one, and um, some of the stuff is already sold out, like the kerchiefs card is sold out, the B paper sold out, but I pulled in the Sending You Thoughts. I also pulled in some of the coordinating product with Celebration that will be leaving us tomorrow as well. In this catalog, I pulled in the foil paper, and I think that's it for this one, but this vellum paper has been a big hit. Um, oh, I pulled in the tags and bloom, so yay. All right, so just remember now too, um, if you are not a discount shopper and you love Stampin' Up! products or you're just getting started and you have a long wish list, now is actually the best time to sign up. You get to pick out any stamp set that you want for free. So let's say you really liked like the So Sentimental stamp set, like $20 value-ish, somewhere around there, that would be free. You also get the paper trimmer and then you also get the pack of paper. So I am super excited because I just got off the phone with a new customer that I just met a couple weeks ago. Her name is Deborah, and she was signing up. Yay, so I think I have a new team member uh, for the Be Happy Stampers. Um, so that's so exciting, yay, I'm doing jazz hands. I'm so excited for her. So, okay, so um, Angela, it sounds like Lisa fixed it. So perfect, hi Sherry, thanks for the catalogs and kits. Yes, you were the one that I dropped catalogs off to, so super excited, okay. So I think before I get started, I meant to do this on Friday too. I wanna clear this out of the way because 
I don't know if you girls were watching me last week and I was using my glue scissors and it was really sticking. It was not opening so good. And I, I don't know if you could tell that um, or if I made a comment about it, but I want you to know that I keep a scissors for glue and I keep one for ribbon and I keep one for paper. So I have three of the paper snips that Stampin' Up! has. And my one for glue, when you cut, you cut your tear and tape in half and you cut your dimensionals in half, you are gonna get like gooey stick scissors. So I was gonna do this live for you so that you could see it versus just doing it myself. Um, this is just, I call it Goo Gone. It's adhesive remover. And all you wanna do is if you get a gooey scissors is, I don't know if you can even see this, but um, let's see here. Yeah, you can kind of see it like right through here. It's super gooey. So all you're gonna do is you're going to take your scissors and just rub that back and forth on the Goo Gone. Now, the Goo Gone thing has a scraper on it. And before I got started tonight, I wanted to do this because I use the scissors a lot and it was having a hard time opening. So you just wanna be careful not to get it all over and you do not want to cut yourself because these paper snips are super, super sharp. So just a trick in case you get gooey scissors, even if you're at home and you're cutting packaging tape or anything that has like a stick on it, you definitely just grab out your Goo Gone and you can get them all cleaned up very nicely. So I thought that that would be good to share. Give me a shout out if you didn't know that and that helped you with a little bit of information. I like to give you little tips and tricks. Um, Sherry, I know you're new to me, so I have a VIP page for my customers who have purchased from me in the last six months to, a, I don't know, a year. I guess I don't keep that good a track of it, but um, I'll add you to that. And I have a Tip Tuesday and I have a Technique Thursday, so I'll get you added to that. So there you go, boom. My scissors, it doesn't catch anymore. So super exciting. Okay, so I would take a poll to ask you what card you wanna make first because, oh, I don't know where I wanna start, but I think I wanna start with the butterfly, or the butterflies. When I say butterflies, I sometimes mean ladybugs. So if I say butterflies, know that I am definitely referring to the ladybugs. So, okay, so this ladybug set. This one is the stamp set. It's called Little Ladybug. And this stamp set is available through tomorrow yet. And how it works is it was in the end of the first celebration catalog. It is a host set. So if you hosted a party that was valued at $300 or more, the host got the Ladybug stamp set for free. So Diane gave me a stamp set last week um, to hand out, to spread some love. And Melissa, we announced that earlier, she won that. So I also have a little ladybug that I will be sharing and it will be out to somebody who likes, shares, or comments in this Facebook Live and just share the love. So I will also be giving out a little ladybug set. So um, it's a super cool set. As of right now, you can also get, I don't think they're sold out yet, but they're called Ladybugs Dies and they have all the coordinating dies that will cut out all of the images. So. I actually have some of them out right now. Oop, there goes my light. So I have some of them out. So there's like the flower, there's the flying one. So these are all the dies. So I have them out because I wanted to show you girls a trick. So, okay, so that's the stamp set. That's pretty much, oh, I did pull in a couple other things for this card. What I pulled in is the subtle embossing folder. So all of you who got the kits from me, that stuff was already uh, emboss for you and there's also one more die that I used in this one it's the outer rectangle that has scallops and the stitching and this is from the stitched so sweetly dies so when I pulled in that stamp set earlier this is part of a bundle and it's currently on back order but it would it has all these beautiful words in it that you can cut out with these if you don't like the stamps these dies are a must have though. Oh, I love the stitching around them. So that's where I pulled that. So everybody's got those already die cut. So let's get the stamp set out of the way. And let's see here. Let's make a little bit of room there. Okay, so this is the card that we're gonna be making. And so everybody's gonna have, um, that got the kits for me, you're gonna have your black card base, which is basic black. And it is eight, uh, eight and a half by five and a half. 
and you'll have gotten a white inside mat. And then if you don't have the ladybug stamp set, that's okay. You can go ahead and stamp anything else that you want and decorate it however you want. But I had, um, for my sample here, I've already stamped it so that you could see how I decorated the inside of mine. And you are able to um, stamp whatever sentiment you want in the inside. So that inside mat measures four by five and a quarter. And what you will do is take out your liquid glue, or if you're a tape runner person, that is quite all right. When you do the liquid glue, you just wanna make sure you don't go too close to the edge so that the glue oozes out on you. And you also wanna make sure you don't use a lot. Uh, less is best with the craft glue. Um, you don't need a lot for it to stick. Hi, Jay. Is that what you had me use to clean up my foil piece in card class? Yes, good call, Jay. Okay, so Jay just asked a question real quick. I'm gonna answer her. So Jay came to one of my classes not too long ago and we used the foil paper. So the foil paper is this kind of shiny foil paper. And when you're gluing stuff on this or you're gluing this onto something and you get liquid glue on here, you just take a Q-tip and dip it in the cover and you're just gonna take that Q-tip and you wipe that glue or goo off of your foil paper and it looks brand new. So good question, good question. So, hey Rhonda, thanks for joining. Okay, so we've got our inside glued in. And then for, for those that got the kits, you'll have a real red. Now the same size, it's four by five and a quarter. It's just your traditional mat. What you're gonna do is you'll flip that over. Now, with the subtle, there is really no top or bottom. Sometimes when you have embossing folders, you want it to go one way or the other. With this subtle, I've had a really hard time figuring out if one side is more textured than the other, and I really don't see a difference. So for the subtle embossing folder, there's really no right or wrong for which way to emboss or you know show the embossing. Okay, so then what you'll wanna do, for those at home that have the kids, you'll wanna stamp a sentiment in the top corner. I like the thinking of you because that made this card very versatile. You could always stamp happy birthday on the inside. You could stamp thanks. Thinking of you is just sending a card out to somebody that you are thinking of. So what I did for this one is I will take my dimensionals. Now these are foam, these dimensionals were from the paper pumpkin kit that I was using last week. So I wanna use some of those up. So I have those sitting right next to me. And when you put the dimensionals down, the like the more you press on them, the easier they come apart. Sherry, you, um, you got the three cheers to you card kit. That's what I dropped off today. Inside your kit is gonna be some dimensionals. So I know you're just new to stamping. So you've got stamps in here too as well. So if there's anything you wanna stamp, there's a block in there. So just know that you've got dimensionals in there in case you don't have any at home because you're just getting started. So I just centered that in my card. And then there's these little, the flower and the little ladybug. So I wanna show you girls a trick. So when you are at home and you, like sometimes you're making swap cards or you're making lots of Christmas cards or like let's say you found a birthday card that you really like and you wanna make 10 of them. So there's this stamp positioning tool. It's called a stamp apparatus. It comes with a plastic like um, layer like this. It also comes with a second one. So you get two of these plates and there's also magnetic um, um, magnets underneath here to help hold your paper down. And it's great for doing consistent stamping and lots of it. And also if you don't have blocks around. So what I've done is I, um, I created a template so that I could show you this really cool technique. So what I've done is I had my piece of white paper, just white paper, and what I did is I put my stamps on the Stamparatus and I just stamped them. Then I took my piece of white off of here and I went over to my Big Shot and I die cut out all the little, little critters and the flower. So I die cut them out and then what I did is I brought the white sheet back and I put it exactly where I had it to begin with. And it was really important that you have it exactly where you put it to begin with. Otherwise your images aren't gonna stamp so straight. So then what you're gonna do is you have, like let's say you go to the Big Shot and you're just gonna cut out 
like you can just go cut out a whole bunch of these. Like let's say you're making 10 of these cards. You would just run through these, through the Big Shot 10 times on your paper and you're gonna end up with a bunch of these little white blank pieces. So now the trick is you wanna stamp them. So what you're gonna do is layer them in their little blank inserts here and they fit perfectly in there, okay? So now you got all four of those and you could do whatever you want, like whatever images you wanna do. Then what you'll come over here and do, I'm just put that down there for some support. I use the Memento Black ink. I always use water-based ink when I'm using stamps that I'm gonna be dye, um, coloring in. So this is just a black water-based ink pad that you can get through me through Stampin' Up. And I am just inking up my images here. So when I have the black memento ink, like I wrote on here that I started this pad in February of 2020. So this ink pad is pretty good. You can see that it's inking it up really nicely. Sometimes the more that you use the ink pads, you definitely will, will, will wanna have the reinkers so that you can ink them up. Okay, so now you've got your template filled with all the little pieces. You're just gonna flip this shut and put some good even pressure on here. And just press, press, press. How many of you have a Stamparatus and didn't know that this was even an option? This is a cool trick. So look at this. Now you're just gonna, like I grab my little pokey tool here. You can take out your little pieces. Look at how perfectly stamp that is like right around the edges. So basically, you know, you spent a lot of time, like if you would have stamped this ahead, then what you have to do is go line your template up and then put tape down potentially, and it takes time to do that. This way, now if I would have had the next set, I would just put that in here, ink up, and stamp. Put them in there, ink up, stamp. So super, super cool trick for using the Stamparatus to give you like consistent, a lot of stamping. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna set that off to the side. So. Um, so for those at home that don't have the ladybug set, you could improvise and use something else that you have. But what you would want to do next, if you do have the ladybug set, is you would just color these in. So what I've done for coloring in, so I'm going to just set these guys off to the side. Um, I used blends to color them in. You could use colored pencils. You could use crayons. You could use markers. You could use anything. You don't have to use the blends, but the blends are what I love to color with. So in the ladybugs, I used the light cherry cobbler I used, now this doesn't look like black, it actually looks like blue, but this is the light basic black and I use that to color in their little circles. So in this case, if you look at it, like these circles, they have like this white like area that is exposed yet. I took my black marker and I colored them in so that they were solid. I didn't want that washed look. So I did pull in a basic black um, blend for that and then for in this one, on his inner shell area, I used a light smoky slate. And then for his body, or hers, I guess, I think we talked about this last week that everything is boys for me. So um, on this one, his in his belly is pink, like an ivory color. So this is like an ivory skin tone. I had a really hard time with these ladybugs because I'm like, they look like they're people because of their faces but they're not, and so what's the ladybug's face supposed to be? I don't know, so they're ivory. So those are your three little pieces that you'll get. And then the flower, what I did is I did light daffodil delight in the middle, and it's really hard to see it, but I did take this light smoky slate and I kind of traced some of my petal leaves or like the lines that are coming out of the center of the flower. I did trace them with the light smoky slate. And then for the leaves on the bottom here, I did a combination. I did the light here and the dark granny apple. I did dark, like more on the vein area. And then I did the light around the rest of the leaf. So you definitely wanna color in that. And then once you've got those ready to go, then it's time for assembly. So what I did, and I'm like feeling, what did I do? You know, it's always nice to see and feel. Okay, so what I did is, I don't always use the same adhesive on the, 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 the image. So like in this case, I was feeling, I put dimensionals at the top of the flower, 
but then I did not put anything on the bottom. So what I did is I just dimensionalized the top and I put a little bit of liquid glue at the bottom here. And I'm actually not gonna even do anything under the stem here because we gotta tuck his butt behind there. <laughs> his little bird, his little ladybug butt. Okay, so I've got the flower coming down a little bit lower here. You can see it comes almost to the bottom of the red. I don't have it in line with the white. So I'm gonna be centering that on here, just like so. And then I'm gonna press where I put the liquid glue. Now, this guy, what I've got for him is I've got a dimensional under his head and then I've got him glued flat on the pedal. If you would put a dimensional on the top and the bottom, he would be kind of like diagonal, like his head would be going down and his um, bottom side would be coming up. So what I'm gonna do is just put a dimensional on his top half, grab my liquid glue and put a little glue on his bottom half. And he's gonna like act like he's standing on the pedal. Now this guy down on the bottom, I put a dimensional on the bottom, but not on the top because this part is already puffed up or popped up here. I don't want to add more over that. So this is a great trick with your dimensionals. If you have some left on the side here that are all connected, just cut off the parts that you need. So on him, we're gonna put a little dimensional along the bottom and we're gonna put some glue right behind his head. Now, I didn't glue down the stem here because I'm gonna tuck him slightly like he's kind of hiding behind it. And he's like, check out me, I'm cute, aren't I? Look at that little face. Okay, now we have the one that's flying up here. And if I look at here, I put a double stack on the side here and I just put a single there because the part that's over here definitely needed one but I like my stuff to look like they're flying through the air. So like I just took this and I curled the, the edges of the paper and I'm gonna put one here and we're gonna be gluing flat here. And in this case, I might just pull in my mini ones and I'm not gonna do it quite yet. We're gonna see once where it needs to go. Sometimes you don't have to do it until you have it where you want it and you can always tuck in a dimensional. So. I've got this one flying right about here. And now I can see like right here is where I would want to put that dimensional. So I'm gonna actually put that on the red piece and then I'm gonna put a second one right there because I want that wing to be flying a little bit higher. Okay, so that's how I put that together. Boom, cool. So for those of you who got the card kits for me, I need to apologize. <laughs> I had such a little difficulty with these rhinestones. They have changed how they came on this packaging. And some of you, I noticed when they were out in the garden hose container with the cold, it was like, I don't know, 50 something today, maybe, I guess I'm guessing, don't really know for sure, but they were cold and they just, they wanted to move around. So I, I have to apologize in advance if some of you got them and they're sticking together weirdly. So, uh, whoa. That just flew like halfway through the air. Sorry, my head is in here. So um, so um, just work with them the best you can. And if you get to the point where you lost diamonds and you need diamonds and you don't have diamonds, I can help you out. So I don't want you to not have diamonds for your card. So I actually have six diamonds on here. So normally when you do stuff with diamonds and embellishments, you do like odd numbers, like floral arrangements. But in this case, I put six because I have like one here, like a grouping here and a grouping down here. So I definitely used, like it's three little chunks, but it's a total of six. So I gave everybody a strip of diamonds like this plus a few more because I noticed I used a lot of diamonds on these cards. So there you go. That is basically it in a nutshell for our ladybug card. What do you think? Was it fun? I think that they are so adorable. So that one is done. We're gonna set that off to the side and we're gonna go to this one next. <laughs> so why not, right? Okay, so I've done this so easy and consistent results. Yes, oh, so you like that technique too. So um, how cool is that? Okay, yes, my magnets, I've never had a problem with my magnets not staying on the back. So I'm not sure if your magnets maybe aren't as strong, but, um, you could always call or we could call Stampin' Up if you ever have problems with anything. So um, this next card right here 
is using, da -da 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 -da, drum roll, hang on, we're gonna be using Sending You Thoughts, is basically the stamp set that the dies coordinate with. So in this card right here, there is, I have this guy, it can go over here. This stuff can set um, that out of the way. Okay, make myself some room. So the dies are called Sending Flowers Dies. And they come with, there's five of them. So there's these two banners, there's two sets of flowers, and then there's the big circle thing. And I have it in the paper yet so that you can see what is going on. So, um, yeah. So when I designed this, I did not think that I would be die cutting all of these little flowers for you. But oh my goodness, I think with 17 kits needing, I needed four times seven of those little guys. And those little guys, there's only two of them. So needless to say, I spent a lot of time die cutting. I did it out of love though, because I love all of you guys. So um, these are what I ended up with extra. So I do want to make a disclaimer that in some cases, some people got a yellow flower like this with the pink tulips. And sometimes it was the opposite. People got yellow like this and pink tulips just because when I was running the paper through, I just ran a bunch of yellows and then I ran a bunch of pinks and then I just sorted little piles. So just so you know, I hope that you're okay with that. But the colors that I use here, I've used a thick whisper white card base. Whenever you're using white as the card base, it's nicer to use a thicker heavy duty cardstock versus just regular whisper white like the regular paper. This is just a lot sturdier of a card then. Then I have a white mat on the top. The white mat is not for you to put in the inside. Whenever I make cards with whiter vanilla for the base, I just stamp directly onto here. So you can stamp whatever sentiments you want on there. And I chose to say, just wanted to say, and then you can put whatever you want on the inside. But you, this is a long skinny stamp. So if you earned the set for free, actually, for celebration, the congratulations fits in there really nicely. Um, the sending a little something could fit in there. Um, and, and most of you are stampers, so you have different sayings that you could put in there. But just wanted you to say is what I use because I thought that was very versatile. And then you can flip it open and put happy birthday or thank you. So I actually, this if you're wondering, this just wanted to say, it comes from a brand new stamp set that isn't even available to customers yet. It is available if you're a demonstrator and starting April 1st, it will be available along with some other products that are coming out. There are new annual catalog products that aren't, that are coming out in the June catalog, but are available now to demonstrators and customers April 1st. It's like an early release. So I'm just going to pop out on and show you this because I started to show it to you, but this is the Anort's, an ornate like suite of products. You are going to drop your mouths when you see these dies that go with them. They are so intricate and detailed. They are so pretty. So these are two bundles that are available and then a new embossing folder that is available and then some ribbons and also embellishments and then, oh my goodness, oh so gorgeous paper. So I didn't want to like sidetrack too much here, but I wanted to also show you where I got the just wanted to say. And so if you get this stamp set in the future too, a lot of these long skinny verses coordinate really nicely if you get this die set. They fit in there very nicely. So that's a little bit about where that stuff came from. Now, um, for those of you who got kits, you will get this die cut piece like this. And what you're going to need to do you're definitely going to have to do this because I did not do it for you. You're going to have to take your pokey tool and you're going to have to poke these out. Now for me for poking, you can see that those are ending up on my finger. If you took your pokey tool and just poke straight down, they have a tendency of wanting to stick to your paper and not come off of it. It's like it's still got a couple threads of paper. So what I find myself doing a lot when I have to poke little images or little areas like this, I put my finger behind it and I don't poke very hard, but I poke right in the center of it. And when I'm pushing it, I'm pushing it into my paper and trying to get it to stick to my paper so that it like, it like, like loses tension. So you don't want to poke so hard though that you poke your finger because that hurts. But 
then what you'll do is you'll definitely want to go through and poke these. And if that's not so like easy to do, what you could do is just poke like that and then just scrape the back of it with your finger like that too. So it's whatever is easiest for you. But just know that I did not do that for you. I generally don't when it comes to these picky little detail dies. I, I get them die cut for you and then you can help me out by cleaning up the images yourself. So if you don't have a pokey tool like this, you could definitely use a uh, fine pointed scissors as well. But you can see here as I'm just rolling right through this one, I got all those done in like 10 seconds. So, all right, so you'll have that all cleaned up, which is great. All right, now you have, <laughs> get your little mess out of the way. If you were at class here, you would just throw it on the floor, um, which I get. <laughs> you will be very happy to know that I've swept the entire classroom and, and it's sad because there's nothing on the floor. So <laughs> no love. So, okay, so we've got that. Now I wanted to show you this part right here. So what this is, is a four by five and a quarter. And I did have to run this through. Hi, Karen. Thanks for joining. I did have to run this through the Big Shot three times. And what I mean three times is I ran it through and it went this way. And then I reversed it. And then I went back. And when you do that, it really helps to get the, the dye cutting into the paper really nicely. So um, what, what I did, and if you have this dye, this is what I found myself doing. I took the inner part here and I just kind of wiggled that out. And honestly, it just kind of falls right out. Uh, I did then throw that away. And now you've got this die that's kind of like stuck in here yet. So I started from the top and then I went from the bottom and those just kind of fell right out. Now, I am pretty amazed because there's not one little piece in here that needs to be cut out. But for those of you who got the kits, you might have to take and poke out some extra pieces. A lot of the stuff did for me end up back in the dye. Now, when you're using dyes at home, I highly encourage you to take and poke out pieces like this before you use the dye again. The more that you use this and you don't pick those things out, it's not going to cut as good because what's happening is the paper's coming up to that like edge where it cuts and it's not going to cut as crisp and clean. So, um, and two, when you're in a class and you're using a dye like that, you want to clean it out before you have the next person use it. It's just like a common courtesy to do. So, oh, Angela, toothpick. Love it. Yep. A toothpick would work perfect to poke those out. So, so that's the other dye. So in the, the dye set here, it came with the two sets of flowers, those two banner things, and then it has that circle bit. So um, that is still available as far as I know, and it's part of the coordinating product. So, okay, let's get that put away. So then what I did is um, I will, for those at home, you want to color, I, I had a really hard time with this because this is all white and I definitely needed some color. So I have the Granny Apple Green, which is what I used on that last um, ladybug card. And so what you can do, see this is a dark Granny Apple Green, and what you can do is color your lines of stems and leaves. You definitely don't wanna color too far below to the edge here because you'll see that. So in some cases, you could do the lighter green and then in some cases, you could definitely do the, the I'm sorry, the darker and the lighter. So like here's the light one. So you could have two tones going on. In this case, what I did is I colored all of that in the light granny apple. So go ahead and pick your method for coloring. Um, if you've got watercolor pencils, don't worry about coloring over the tops of some of the flowers because the flowers that we have here that are in your kits are gonna definitely go right over the top of them. So um, you also wanna be careful too, like uh, I don't know if you can see so much. Oh, you can see a little bit of white there. You could take a colored pencil or a marker and color like the edges of the white so you don't see that. So, okay, so I'm gonna keep coloring here just a little bit because I know some of you gals at home also have yours that you need to color. So I'm gonna pull back in the green because I feel like I'm doing a two-tone uh, stem and leaf color here. I'm gonna do that one there and we'll see how different it looks having the two different colors. So these blends are awesome. They are $4.50 for a single or $9 for a combo pair and they last a very long time. Okay, so I've got some Granny Apple Green Ribbon here. So this is in the annual catalog. It is called 
textured weave ribbon and it comes in two different colors. So this granny apple I thought was really cool to bring in. Um, and we are going to be putting the ribbon, like I'm using it as like a base, like to like have the flowers are growing out of it. So you know, like it's kind of like grass to me. Okay, so <laughs> I know that's kind of crazy how my brain works. So we're gonna call that ribbon the grass. And so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be flipping this over and I like to use tear tape on the back of the ribbon here. I don't like to use it on the front. I do not ever use liquid glue with ribbon. That will just be a, a hot sticky mess. That is your favorite ribbon, yes. Stacy, you made uh, an elephant, um, the Animal Friends card, and I remember you used the gray granite weave ribbon on your card. So what you do then is I eyeball from the front and you're just gonna flip the tails to the back. And if they are a little too long, depending on how long they got cut, you can just trim off some of that. Okay, we're gonna put my scissors back there. All right, now I also normally would put more over the top, and I will in this case, but I'm not going to pick it off. I'm gonna leave it on there, like the wax paper is what I'm talking about, just like that. So I did pop up, um, this piece, but I also, for those of you who have the kits, the last little bit in here, oh, where is it? Um, hang on one moment. Like, take a pause, take a drink. I gotta get the piece. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, so <laughs> I've got it all made, but I just didn't have it next to me. So this is a balmy blue piece. I think it's like three by three or something like that. Actually, we can take a look for sure. It is on here three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. So what I did when I cut this piece of paper, I made it just so that it would fit in the window of your, your circle here. So it's not quite four by four. And I also did pull in, I don't know if you can see it, but it's the subtle embossing folder. So oh, it is my favorite embossing folder in the world. It just adds texture to a piece of paper when you don't know what else you want to put on it. So what I'm gonna be doing here is this is just gonna get adhered down to here, and I am just going to use some of my tear and tape to do this. Now, you could definitely glue a little bit on the corners if you want, but I'm just going to be putting this along the bottom to hold that in place, and I'm gonna put some at the top. So, that is just providing a blue background for us. Okay, now that that is done, what I do is I have dimensionals over this whole thing. And because I love to use up things, I'm gonna continue to use my paper pumpkin dimensionals here just to try to get some of that used up. And then I'm gonna come over here. Now this is where you wanna fill your card full of dimensionals just to provide some good structure and stability for this white piece of paper now mixed with the balmy blue, okay. So for those at home, if you're following along, hopefully I'm not going too fast for you, but all you're gonna do then is pick off all your little wax papers. Look at me go. It's been a week since I broke my thumbnail and this is what I'm used to doing is just cruising through and picking up like five at a time before I have so many that I have to let go. Okay, so I missed one right here. I missed one right here, okay. All right, you girls doing okay? I'm doing great. We got a front here ready to go. So that is just going to get adhered to the front of your card, just like that. Okay, now I did look in the inside here. I have a flower here that I stamped in mine. And just a side note, it's lovely, or Melon Mambo. And the flower is actually from the set that we're gonna be using next. So I'll show you that in a second because I used it on my cards, I use it on both of those insides. So, okay, now we've got that. We've got our banner here that just says, just wanted to say. And so I'm gonna pull in my dimensionals again for that. Now let's see what I did here. I actually used a, two strips because I was using up, watch this, I'm gonna show you a trick. This is how I do this. Grab your glue scissors and when you have your dimensionals, that's not my glue scissors, una momento, grab your glue scissors, and this is where you can use up the edges. So I took one side, and then I cut that in half, and now you have two 
like longer skinny pieces. And I put one along like that and then do another one like that. And that makes it really nice and sturdy all the way through. Pick off your backing. And that is gonna go, I've got my, like the bannered end, I got that kind of flush with the edge over here. And I've got a little bit of the green. So I've got like that white from the green just like in the middle. We're just gonna put on like that, boom. Okay, this ribbon is just a shorter piece. So those who've got kits for me, your longer piece is gonna be the one that wraps around here. And then your shorter piece, all you're gonna do is take that and you just like tie it like into a knot, but you're only gonna do it one time. You're not gonna actually do it two times, which would be more like a knot. So you've got that just tied. And this is where you're gonna pull in your glue dots. If you don't have glue dots, like double-sided tape would probably work too. If you, um, if you don't have glue dots, you could use your liquid glue, but just, just put it there and don't move it, like let it dry completely. But what I like to use, it, these are called glue dots. And like, I'm thinking of you, Sherry, if you don't have stuff, but I'm pretty sure you got glue dots in your kit that you just bought. Okay, so then you're gonna put your glue dots like that, and you're gonna nestle that knot right in the middle there, and you will grab your ribbon scissors and just trim your ends however you want to see them. Love it. Okay, cool. Now, what do we have left? We have to put these <laughs> bad boys on. Okay, so everybody that um, got a kit from me, you got a saffron, it's called So Saffron, and it's a butterfly. And that comes from the Butterfly Duet Punch, which is a free item with a $100 purchase through tomorrow. So that's super cool. So I even pulled in another celebration product and I didn't even realize I was doing it. Cool beans. So you are gonna grab one of your mini dimensionals and put that on the back of your saffron butterfly. I've got that little guy just nestled up there. Now, you've got flowers. So I know that I just mentioned that everybody, so the dies come with different sizes. So, so we had to count out exactly what you needed. And so I have here, let's, I got a little hot mess going on. So let's see here. We're gonna do a yellow one of that size. And then we're gonna do that size for that. And then there's these little guys. So you should, so hopefully when you open up your kits, you have everything in there and they didn't fall out, but you should have four of either pink or yellow like that. There's one big one like this, and then there's two of the medium size flowers like that. Then you have tulips. So there were one, two, three little tulips. So you grab out your three. All of you have them like kind of loose in your kit. So I'm hoping nothing fell out. And then you've got your big tulips. Okay, so all of these are extra because I've got other samples to make. So let's put those away. So how I would do that, because all of these are kind of like loose in here. If you look at that, they're, they're just kind of hanging there, super cool. So you wanna be careful as you're gluing these down that you don't kind of glue them to the blue piece. And all I'm gonna do is put little dots of glue along each one of these flowers. Um, dot, dot, not a lot. <laughs> you know, that's what you teach your kids with glue, right? So I'm just putting little baby dots be careful not to put too much because they, you know, glue has a tendency of oozing out the sides. So this also could be good if you had a tweezers, but what you'll do is just place your flowers over the top of where you just put the glue. These guys are kind of hard to figure out. If I remember correctly, there's a certain way that they go onto the card. Tulips, definitely easy. Um, I liked the tulips the best. So that guy is, um, <laughs> so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to the tulips first because get those easy ones out of the way. This one fits on here maybe like that. Um, if you are doing this and you're noticing white sticking out like over there, just take your marker or whatever you use to color and just you can go back at the end and color it. So, okay, so we got that and now we need to do some of these little yellow guys. And, oh, that did definitely not go that way. So the struggle is real. You can see that you might have a little bit of a hard time also putting your little flowers on. And it's probably like really um, horrible watching me do this because it's, <laughs> you gotta get them just right. 
Oh, goodness. So, okay, so we're gonna do that one there. And what do I have left? I have this big daddy right here, and he looks like he's gonna go like that. Okay, we're rocking and rolling now. I need a teeny tiny little pink tulip. Comes here, come a little closer, and there you are. All right, that wasn't so bad, was it? Okay, so, hi Peggy, <laughs> you're not too slow. The good thing about the video is that if you aren't staying caught up to me, because I'm trying to get through this rather quick, not quickly, but fast enough so that I'm not here all night, you can always, when this video is done, you can go and watch the replay and you can fast forward and you can reverse it, you can pause it. I'll tell you, I've watched a lot of videos in my day and I find myself pausing, doing it, pausing, doing it, but when it's live, it's hard to do that because you can't pause it per se. So this is where the rest of your diamonds are gonna come in. I uh, do not have, you have, everybody's got two big ones and then there was two medium ones and so make sure you save some for the last card though. Okay, so we're just gonna put one of those in the middle of each one of the, the flowers that have the five pointed petals. And some of you might have your yellow circles in there and some might have them out. It, it's okay if you have them in or out. You've noticed I just put my diamonds right over the top of them. And then I had here, a medium size one in the middle of that one. So there you go. Okay, did I forget anything? Oh yes, I did. I forgot to put a diamond in the butterfly up here. And Bonnie would not be happy with me if I forgot to tell you to pull out your Stella pen and make sure you glitterific all your flowers. That is what makes this card so special. When you see it, you have the diamonds glistening and all your flowers are also like just gonna be a little bit shimmery from the Stella pen. How many of you have a Stella pen? Oh my goodness. If you don't have a Stella pen, you contact me and we need to get one on your next order so that you can make sure that your stuff is all glittery. Okay, it's controlled too, which is awesome. Okay, all right, what do we got here? Same, hello, the sticky end of the picture works for the little flowers too. Yes, they do. I love the commentary. Awesome, thanks sharing for sharing ideas, girls. So you can see the difference here. I did the light and the dark, and it actually looks kind of cool having the different kinds of the, diff the green color in. And like, if you end up, after you're done coloring, you see that like there's some white showing in certain spots, just take your marker or your colored pencil or whatever you use and just fill that little bit back in and then you should be good. Okay, how was that? Not so bad, right? So I have found that you gotta, if you don't like this part of the dye that I just showed you, that dye isn't for you. This circly dye is what makes that so cool. The other thing you could do is these little guys up here, you can take them and get in there and pop them out so that they're, like in this card, I did it a little bit more. I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah, there you can see it. I kind of like pulled all those little guys out before I assembled it. So you can also take your, pick your tool and kind of get in there and pull them forward. So if you girls have this die and you've made any cards with it, share them on the Facebook post feed so we can see what you've made. I would love to see it. So, all right, we've got two cards done. We are going to do this card next. This card, what does it look like? Um, I gotta find my sample. Oh, right here it is on the side, covered up by the meerkats. Okay, so this one, this is the foil paper. You get this free with a $50 purchase. There are four patterns to it and it's just so gorgeous. It's so like shimmery. It's like got this kind of rose gold hue to it uh, and some like silvery platinum with it. So this one, I brought in the Tags in Bloom. So the Tags in Bloom is free with a $100 purchase. It has like two sets of stamps in it. And I, for my set, I pulled in a few of the different stamps. Now, if you don't have this at home, that's okay. You could always improvise, but I'll show you what I did use in here. So I pulled in, this is one of the stamps. Um, it's the stamp right here. So that is what I used. I also pulled in the dots, like the dashing ones that go around. 
And then I thought wishing you the best was very universal. It could be, you could end up stamping in the inside, like happy wedding day, congratulations. It's just wishing you the best. It's very generic that you're just wishing the best to somebody. So um, let's get those out of the way. Okay, so that's tags in bloom. That also coordinates with this lovely, label me lovely punch. Oh, there you can see my face. Look at that, hi everybody, yay. Okay, so that's label me lovely punch. It is, oh, I don't remember. It was on back order. And I think it's on back order till April something, but it is still available to purchase. They haven't turned off the number. There's another punch called Label Me Fancy, which coordinates with this punch here, or this um, stamp. So I pulled in this, which coordinates with the tags in bloom. <clears throat> what else did I use here? Okay, the white ribbon here, that comes in um, silver and white. It's called Metallic Edge Ribbon. Super soft. It's very pliable, so it's really easy for making bows. So everybody in their kits has gotten a piece like this, which will be used for your kit. And then everybody also, I made your bows. So you don't have to make your own bows. You should have a bow in your kit. And then you'll have your diamonds that were part of your strip of diamonds. So let's go ahead and get started, and I'll show you what I got going on here. So the color that I used for this is called Rococo Rose. It is one of the new ink colors and it just became available this year. So it's going to be available again for another year. So it's your normal card base, five and a half by eight and a half. And then on the inside, I've got your traditional mat and you can stamp what you want on the bottom. But I wanted to pull this out. That little flower here, which I pointed out on the earlier card, is a flower from this set. So we used it um, on that previous card in Lovely Lipstick. <clears throat> and for this card, excuse me. This card, the ink that I used is Smoky Slate. So you could stamp whatever you want in the bottom corner. And I had the flower because it matches the flower here. Okay, so what you'll do, for those of you who have kits, you can go ahead, after you've done whatever stamping you want to do, go ahead and you can place your inside mat on the interior of the card. And that's done. So this is smoky slate here, and it's coupled with the uh, foil paper. So in case you're wondering how I did my mats here, um, this mat is five by three and three quarters, and then my mat just fits right on top of that. It's four and 13 sixteenths by three and nine sixteenths. I basically shaved off three and a sixteenth off of each side. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip over your foil paper. So this foil paper is not double-sided, so you don't have to worry about covering up a really pretty side, um, a pattern on the other side. And you're just going to put that on top of your smoky slate piece. Then I have a piece of foil here. <clears throat> this was the silver foil that I showed you earlier. It's three and three quarters which is the same distance that the smoky slate is, or it should be, and by seven eighths. And you can see on my sample here, I have it just a little bit north of, I always say the border, or north of the equator, <laughs> north of the center line. So it's not quite in the center. Now, again, when you're putting this together at home or making your own at home, you can put this wherever you want. I do not get upset of you changing your cards. And by all means, I won't even see what you do to your cards. <laughs> so um, I did put that just slightly north of the equator. And um, if you notice, I may have cut your silver just a hair longer than the smoky slate. And that's okay. Just take your scissors, trim that off. And now you've got that prepped. Next thing is, hi, Bonnie, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, this is where you're gonna take, and we're gonna do the same concept with our tear and tape. We're gonna flip over and add your tear and tape to the back. And again, the, the harder you push that down to begin with, the easier it is to peel off that paper. So we've got that kind of where we think it's gonna go. Now I flip the card back over, and I always look at it from the front, and I eyeball it as best I can. While I'm looking at the front, I just tuck my tails behind like so. And then what I will do is just for extra security and um, making sure it's snug in there and it's not gonna fall out 10 years from now. <laughs> I don't know however long the card lasts, but <laughs> I'm gonna put another couple pieces of tear and tape on the back. 
So my ribbon is never gonna get sneaking out of there. Grab your liquid glue. Oh, you know what? Don't grab your liquid glue. I actually popped up this piece. It's kind of hard to see it, but I did add dimensionals to that. So if you don't like so much height in your cards, I'm one of my good, my good customers, Connie. She likes things flat because she mails them. So you are welcome to not use the dimensionals and just use liquid glue. But um, if I remembered that I was gonna do dimensionals, I probably would not have taken and taken off the um, the backs of the tear and tape because otherwise that might stick down. So you saw what I did there. I just put a couple more dimensionals right over the top of that tear and tape so that the card doesn't get stuck down there. Okay, so you can see that I'm doing good here, getting off my dimensionals, um, the backings of them. So I think I just have a couple more. You can see that when the, um, they look shiny when they're off. So, all right, perfect. Now what you're gonna do is just center this on the top of your card, like so. Okay, we're getting there. Now, this is by the magic of TV. I did not realize this when I got the stamp set that I actually was like, wow, this I thought was the same size as the punch. But when you get this, this is actually does not have a punch that goes with it. The punch actually goes with this. So, um, so when you get this at home, like and you stamp this, you are going to have to fussy cut this out yourself. So sorry for you um, out there that wanna use this image. It does need to get fussy cut. So I've already fussy cut. Fussy cut means just using a scissors and cutting it out yourself. So just know that you'll have to do that with that set. And I uh, did color this. The colors that I used are the Rococo Rose and I used some of the granny apple in here and the yellow. So how I did the Rococo Rose is on the, the little bits of smoky slate that look like they're coming up out of the center of the flower. And then also these little bits that are at the bottom. I used the dark Rococo Rose. I also did it on this one. So that's where I want it to be just a little bit darker. Then I pull in the light Rococo Rose. Oh, you got your cards today, Karen. That's awesome. Thank you so much for liking and sharing the post. I really appreciate that. Um, and hopefully you didn't have to pay extra postage for them. I had a lot of cards in that envelope. So I am pulling in the light Rococo Rose now. And I'm just using it very, very gently. Um, the, the nicer you are to the marker tips and not pressing hard, the longer that these alcohol blends will match and now for you at home if you don't have this color alcohol blend any kind of pink will look just fine with it when you figure out what you want to do for your flowers so i've colored that in and now for the leaves i believe what i'm going to do for those is i'm just going to keep it simple the kiss technique here and i am just going to use the light granny apple green for those i am not going to even bother to pull in the dark when there's such a small area like this it's so hard to pull in a couple colors and do shading and really do it justice. Now this one though, let's just see here. This one, you could definitely just draw the darker line for the veins and let's see once here how that looks. And then when you do that though, you definitely wanna go over the area a little bit more to help blend in the lines. Okay, I'm glad I did that. So I do like that. Okay, and I got one more little guy here and Voila, a little bit of coloring just to show you how I color with the blends. So don't laugh at me, but I did forget to bring a yellow down. I don't think I have anything around me. So let's pretend I'm doing yellow right here. Boom, done, cool. All right, <laughs> so okay. So for those of you who got card kits, you've got that punched out already. You could stamp a sentiment in there. And then what I did is, so I had done the wishing you the best and this was that. And then this was my stamp that I used. So let's pretend I stamped all that in front of you. Nah, by the magic of the TV, we're done already. Boom. Then what you'll do is this one will get popped up with dimensionals and then this one as well. So let's just prep this really quick. And so we have that done. All right. Okay. So 
uh, here we go again. Let's pop off our dimensional backs. And we almost have our third card done. Hey, Bonnie, you're okay that you're late. You'll catch, I have the Meerkats card left. So you'll get to catch that one live. And you can always go back and watch the replay so that you can go along with me putting your cards together. All right, we're just going to pull off the backs of these. And I'm going to place this just over my ribbon. Okay, so find a good spot for that. Now, when I put this down, I decided to put it a little bit more right, so I have room on the side here for my bow. If you put this over here, then it's gonna be chunky on that side. So I have this over to the, to the right, just a hair. Again, pretending that I colored that in. Now, for all you girls that got kits for me, you've got your bow, it's already made. So what you're gonna do, is grab a glue dot and you're just gonna tuck this kind of right in the nook of of your um your image here and let's see here and again that's just is gonna pop now my bow is all wonky do you see that when you have a bow that does that you need to show it who's business because i mean unless you like it like that go for it but i don't like my bows like that <laughs> so i'm gonna show it where it needs to go so I am going to be putting a glue dot right where I want it to be sitting. And by putting a little glue dot there, that helps that ribbon tail to go down where I think it should go. And just for good measure, I'm also gonna do one on this side. Now I probably wouldn't have needed to, but because I did, now that's not going anywhere. So sometimes when I'm putting a bow on my card, I put a couple glue dots in the middle on each tail and sometimes I will even put glue dots back here just if they if these um, bows are not wanting to go where I want them to go I will make sure they get put down nice and tight too with some glue dots so grab out your ribbon scissors and you're just going to trim your tail on each side of the ribbon and now last but not least you should have a couple more uh, diamonds in your kit um, from on your strip, you got a strip like that. Now, if some of yours got stuck on the plastic bag, see if you can pull it off. If you ran out of diamonds, you don't have anything, either not put them on or contact me and I'll get you some ribbon or some more rhinestones. I don't want you to be without. So on this card, I am putting three of them on. So I've got the two here and one there. So, all right. All right, I think we have... Oh, you didn't have extra, it didn't, I think Karen, you're telling me that it didn't, you didn't have to pay extra postage. Perfect. So last week, um, Karen won three paper pumpkin cards for me and I put all three of those cards in one envelope and I put like one stamp plus a George Washington stamp and it was enough postage. Isn't that awesome? Now, if I would have taken that to the post office, they would have said, nope, you owe more for it. So, all right, girls, besides um, having to go back and put a little yellow in here for my coloring, I got your third card done. So... Everybody doing okay? We're on an hour, which I figured we would. And we have one more card to put together. So last, but certainly not least, is our meerkat friends. Who is loving this meerkat set? I will tell you, I was okay with it. They weren't, I wasn't overly crazy about them. But when Mary Collins did a card very similar to this with the meerkats in the umbrella, I was like, oh my God, that is so super cute. So this uses the meerkat out of here. I know most of you probably got this set by now, so you probably couldn't stamp that. Now, if you don't have the meerkats and you want to use something else, you definitely can. Um, but I pulled in here the set that is extra. I pulled in is under my umbrella and under my umbrella coupled with the punch. So I don't know, let's see if I get the light on there. There's an umbrella. So everybody's got their stuff punched out. And I chose to put on here, no matter the weather, we're friends forever. So if you have something similar, great, um, or stamp it. And remember, if you don't like what how you stamp it, you can always flip it over and it's white on the backside. So you could always stamp something else. So this under my umbrella is in the annual, or no, it's in the mini catalog. So here, I'm gonna pull it over here real quick. It is in the mini catalog under my umbrella. It's the bundles, just 30, 50. So super cool. These are the three things that it punches out of the punch here. So, okay. 
Let's get this out of the way. Now you know what I'm using. The last thing here I forgot to tell you too is I love the stitched rectangles. So I pulled in one of the stitched rectangles. So everybody's got that for whoever has kits. It has that die cut already. So let me pull in my pieces. Aww. <laughs> Angela just said she wants to be in the classroom because her um, dining room needs to be vacuumed. <laughs> so, because there's little pieces all over the place, I bet. Yep. So when you girls are in my classroom, I absolutely love it. I do not mind any of the mess. I might tease you about how it's like a dimensional storm all around, but I don't mind cleaning up after you at all. So um, stitched rectangles are here. And, okay, this is um, another celebration item. It's a coordinating item. So it has umbrellas on the backside, actually. And you could, in essence, take this and actually punch out the DSP with that. And you know what? I'm almost tempted to show you something. So um, in your kit, so let's see here. There's a piece like here. So when I, I die cut everybody a rectangle like this, and then I die cut just a piece of balmy blue, and it has the stitched rectangle. So all I did was cut a piece like this, and I ran that through. So if you look at this, oh, I can't do it. Huh. What I was trying to think in my head was, could I cut this out and cover it up with this and not see it? But no, that's not going to work. But there, so this punch is super cool because it coordinates with the paper here. And like in this case, you could cut out your umbrella like that. So um, the Please With Punch paper has four sheets, so like eight patterns, so like four different patterns that are two-sided, and I think you get like three sheets of each one. And so it coordinates with the heart punches. It coordinates with that thoughtful blossom punch, that little flower, this one, and the tulip. So it's really pretty paper. Again, it's only available till through tomorrow. All right, on this one, let's start at the bottom here. So we have the thick, um, the thick whisper white, and like the meerkats, if you have the meerkats, you could stamp them in the bottom and color them in if you like. But I've got your traditional eight and a half by five and a half. If you don't have the mirror cats, you're definitely gonna just use some other critters or something else that you have. And then your piece of DSP here measures four by five and a quarter. So there's nothing crazy that's going on with that. So you can go ahead and glue that down to your card base. Again, if you're a tape runner person, you can do that. All right, so with the liquid glue though, it allows me to wiggle this around a little bit. Okay, great. So now I wanna show you how I stamped this. This is what the finished image will look like. And the raindrops, they get pulled in from the umbrella set. The meerkats over here get pulled in from the meerkat set. The ink that I'm using is balmy blue. And I'll show you here. Everybody will have their umbrella. So if you're wondering where that DSP came from, there is, I used this last week too, to make the sour cream. Do you remember? Let me see here. Last week I made the sour cream container on Friday, that best dressed DSP. That's where this piece of yellow came from. It's got the flowers on one side and the yellow stripe. This just reminds me of a ray of sunshine. I just love it. So that's where that came from. So I've got everybody's punched out. And the silver little umbrella handle, that is actually your silver foil paper, just like we used in the last card. So that's, everybody's got that in their kit. You've got a piece of white paper like this for you to stamp whatever you want. Now I stamped, no matter the, no matter the weather, we're friends forever because they're so adorable and cute, especially with what we're going through now with these trying times. I thought that that was great for this card. Okay, I wanna go through and I wanna show you how I stamped. I haven't done any stamping with you tonight, so we need to stamp. Okay, the first thing we want to do is we want to pull our meerkats out. So, and when you look at this stamp, his little tail is hanging off the side like that. And if you look at it, the umbrella, his little bottom would come hanging out the sides there. And that's not cool because it's like they need to be tucked inside the umbrella, right? So what you need to do is you need to grab some washi tape that you're not so crazy about. So these little spice drops do nothing for me. They're actually stamping up washi tape, so I hate to do <laughs> do something like this to stamp up washi tape, but I'm not so fan, so crazy of a fan of 
the spice drop. So grab off two pieces of washi tape. Washi tape is just like glorified masking tape. It's got like a pretty pattern on it, but it's not super sticky, so it comes off easy. So what you're gonna do, this is called masking. So what you'll do is you're gonna like tape off those sides so that when you ink up, I don't wanna get black ink anywhere. So when you ink this up, you don't actually ink underneath where the washi tape is. So I've got my little guys all good and put that off to the side. So what you have to remember to do, so many people forget this and then we laugh at you. <laughs> we laugh with you, not at you, sorry. Um, so you have to remember to take that off. So you gotta take it off on both sides. So again, this is called masking. You can do this with any stamp out there. Basically, if you have a sentiment, like, like if you saw this, no matter the weather, we're friends forever, you could mask off that and just say, we're friends forever. So masking is awesome um, with any stamps. So now that you've got this inked up, what you're gonna do is stamp it like right about here. You're centering it left to right and about a good inch and a quarter off the bottom. What color are my cats, Lisa? Well, it's funny that you should ask that because I will be doing that next. I have here light and dark soft suede in blends. Now, you could also use um, any color browns that you have. Meerkats, to me, are like a brown color. So there you go. Did you see how that happens? Like it just basically cut off their edge of their tails so that when you have your umbrella, it like they fit in there perfectly. Isn't that cool? Well, hmm, like I think I did pretty good. So, <laughs> so depends on where you put your umbrella. So like I might go like that. And so anyways, now that that's done, you're going to grab your balmy blue ink or any other blue that you have. Um, if you did a darker color, you just would stamp off a couple more times. But how I would like to do the raindrops, and you can just barely see them on here, is I like to do first strength, second strength. And then I would do first strength, second strength. Now remember, I mentioned this last week, and you might not have been watching, but if you stamp off the edge of your paper where half of your stamp is over here and the other half is here, you don't want to go back and stamp the whole thing on your good image because it leaves it like a two-tone look. So you always wanna make sure that you have the full image. And if you do like, let's say you go stamp off, then go over like that. So I'm gonna do a couple more raindrops. Keep falling on my head. Oh, hey, cause these guys are in a stormy situation right now. And I'm gonna do one more set right there. Okay. So the raindrops come from the Under My Umbrella set. So we're done with the balmy blue. Stamp off a couple times. Oh, Karen, you don't like the meerkats, you know? Oh, the only reason I got them is because they were free, but I'm like, the not everybody, I think, honestly, like that was some of the first sets that when my customers were buying, the meerkats were first. Like, they are adorable. Like, that guy is super cute. I think he's like, adorable. Anyway, so the coloring. Lisa asked for about coloring. So I used a, like a light and a dark on this. Let's pull the card up so you can see how I colored them. Um, <clears throat> you have to be careful because the dark does get dark, but if you, I don't know if you guys can zoom in or not, but and my head might come in here. No, it won't. Good. Perfect. So on the spots where those little lines are <clears throat> is where I kind of did more of the shading and you better be careful too because like part of this gets covered up with the umbrella so you don't want to be coloring stuff that gets covered up so we're gonna do a couple here a little bit on his neck or rooney there okay um yeah that's about it for the dark it's primarily the light soft suede and if you remember we did for the fun folds class we did that deer card the nature's beauty deer card we colored that deer in soft suede. So I know some of you girls got soft suede markers because of it's a really good color for coloring in deer. Um, animals too, uh, any kind of brown animal. Now when you're coloring, you wanna be careful not to color their eyes. Um, the, <laughs> you don't want them to have brown eye, that would be bad. So 
um, just color in. Now you can see I'm just going kind of slow, letting the ink soak into the paper. And I'm a righty, so I tend to do everything like as best I can in one direction, and then I'll flip my paper around, and then I'll do close to the edge with the other direction. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but you can kind of see where I put those little dark spots there. So what I'm going to try to do is blend them so they're not as dark looking. So I'm going to continue. Oh, man, he's got brown eye. <laughs> Oopsie daisy. Um, okay, so that's where if you have a color lifter, that should help um, get the brown eye gone, but at least it's not pink eye. So <laughs> you won't even see that. Um, he's got brown eyes. I'll give that card to my mom. She won't even notice. So most people wouldn't notice, but maybe this is where I should flip over and bring in the thin end because that will allow you to get into these little areas a little bit better. So, oh my goodness, poor little guy. He's swimming in brown here. Okay, so I'm gonna finish this up. Now, if you have colored pencils, espresso would probably work okay too. Even crumb cake, which is like a light tanny color, that would be okay. But if you don't have the soft suede marker and you have the Meerkat stamp at home that you want to color your Meerkats in this, we could definitely get some soft suede markers ordered for you. Okay, boom. That was a little bit difficult. Poor guy in the middle has his brown eye. So, oh, what does mine have brown eyes? Okay, that's cool. No googly eyes for them. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, so now everybody got, so you got this white round rectangle. And then if you got the kits for me, you got this piece of blue. So basically what I did is I ran these through the Big Shot separate and I wanted to make it look like this is water. So on my card here, what I tried to do was I tried to make it look like there were waves like that. And it kind of like goes away because the umbrella covers up a bunch of it. But I went with it. So if you want to leave yours flat and just glue it down, you are more than welcome to. Or if you want to try to do what I just did and like ride the wave, we'll see once how much of it shows after you glue it down. So all you're going to do now is kind of nestle this right in the bottom, corner to corner. Give it a second to dry. Oh yeah, we knew googly. Oh, those would be some teeny tiny googly eyes, Bonnie. Wow, I don't know if they make googly eyes that small. Okay, so there you go. I'm gonna get this guy out of the side, out of the way so that we're not confused. And we're gonna put my sample up there, pull this in. Okay, so now our, um, this piece right here, I do have that popped up with dimensionals. Let's see if I can find where I have them hiding over yonder here. Okay, in this case, I put three along each side, so six, and then I went ahead and put two more in the middle um, so it had a little more stability so that it didn't kind of get caved in. Okay, and we'll pull these guys off. All right, so that just goes on the card front like this. Oh, big point here. When you glue your raindrops down, make sure you glue them so that your raindrops are falling. Um, be careful because if you end up gluing like this, it's like they're upside down. So also like when you stamp raindrops at home, just make sure you stamp them the right way because like the bigger end is like on the bottom. So just a note, okay? So once you've got that prepped and ready, you're gonna put that right in the center like that. All right. So now we're on to our umbrella. So what I did for this is, let's see what I did. I, um, a little trickery here. So if you don't watch this, you might not know to do this. What I did is I put a dimensional, a little one, at each of these peaks like this, okay? That's basically all I did for dimensionals. Then what I did is, because I don't know if you can see it on the card here, but it's flat along the side and it's popped up, Ooh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's popped up there and there, okay? So what I did is I put the two dimensionals like that and I grabbed my liquid glue and this is where I do multiple types of adhesive on a card or like on a piece of paper. And so now I'm gonna be gluing the bottom edge like that. So you see how like what's gonna happen? It's gonna be popped up. Now, this is important 
getting this on here so it's like covering them up. There we go. Okay, cool beans. Let's get that right about there and gotta cover that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm holding where the liquid glue is and the dimensional is gonna make the umbrella, like it's gonna make it look kind of 3D-ish. Okay, now you're wondering about the umbrella. So if you look on this, my umbrella isn't like, it's not gonna go down that far. So what you have to do is you have to take and snip off a little bit off of your bottom of your umbrella and then that'll fit in there. So what I did is I put, I don't even, if you see here, I don't even have that glued down. So what you're gonna do is take a little bit of your liquid glue, put it on the back side of that umbrella handle, and then you're gonna kind of tuck that into, into the inside here. You want it down low enough so that his face doesn't get covered up. I feel a little bad because his hand get covered up, but there's nothing you can really do about that. So you're just gonna have that. So kind of like makes it look like your umbrella handle's just hanging out there, okay? Then you have that little strip of paper that is, um, let's see what size, it's small. Um, whew, I don't even know if I wrote it down in here, but I'm pretty sure this is like three quarters by like two and a half. And again, it's just a piece of whisper white paper. And if you don't like the way that you stamp it on the front, you can always flip it over and stamp something else on the back. And that is gonna go right at the top. And what I did is I put two dimensionals on the right side to pop that up. And then I took my liquid glue and I put that everywhere else here, okay? So when you put that down, um, I matched it up so that it's coming right to the white edge of where the white is seen. I'm covering up my blue, making sure I'm straight, okay. Voila, isn't that cool? So I think that turned out pretty good. So again, I cased this card. It was a Mary Collin card that I had from the team swap party. And I took her card and I hid it upstairs because I didn't want anybody else to see how it was such a cute idea until I came up with like my casing project. So, okay. Um, do, 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 late, but I did. Okay, so, wow, um, we did good. So we've got our meerkats. We've got our tags in bloom. We've got our sending thoughts. And then we have our ladybugs. So I hope that you liked the celebration hoorah rah cards. Um, I enjoy putting them together with you. Hopefully that little bit of extra, like seeing how I do things, it helps you with some tips and tricks on how to assemble cards. Um, again, I have extra kits. I'm gonna flip over here. I have extra kits of these available. So I had 17 that signed up for class and I always like to make card kits in multiples of four. So if anybody is watching this video and they are interested in the card kits, I have... Um, three sets available. They're $15 or free with a $25 purchase. And just remember, if you spend $50, you get a free celebration item and your name on my drawing board. So um, that's the celebration cards. Now, I just want to show you some of the upcoming classes. So with what, how we're doing with, um, with how we can't have in-person stuff, I uh, have to do online. So I have a few classes that I'm doing in the month of April that will be online, but you can order your to-go kits from me. And I'm gonna flip the camera down so I can show you. So there, I always do a monthly class. And in April, I have two of the cards made and ready, they're designed, and I have one more to make. And I'm gonna case one of Naughty Nancy's cards from By the Dock. So the other card is gonna be a manlier man card. So um, the other two are kind of more feminine. So. This one uses that same punch right here. So label me lovely punch. And this is the stamp set that goes with it. And I think it's called Layered with Kindness. And this is a fun fold, check this out. So it opens like this. So this is a birthday card that it has to be birthday um, uh, for this stamp if you use with this label. So, I mean, you can always stamp something else on the inside, but it uses the um, leaves embossing folder here and with a little sponging, it gives a little soft technique. So this one plus the tulip, it's uh, the, I don't know, a tulip something <laughs> stamp set. Um, it comes with, there's a punch with this one as well. And so when you open up this one, it's kind of a different, unique fold as well. So it's a different style of a card. So 
These are two of the cards for the monthly class for April, which at this point, I only have one in person. It's April 25th, which is a Saturday. But again, with whatever's happening with the world, um, it might just be online. So I have it online, I think on April 13th that you can follow along just like we're doing now. And if you want the to-go kits, cool, or the completed cards, there will be one more card and that is $12 or free with a $20 purchase. And some of you didn't see this last week, but on Friday, I worked on the Mountain Air Bundle class. Two of the cards are done here. So this one's super pretty with like the Purple Mountain Majesty. Like I showed the card to Tyler and he's like, there's purple mountains. I'm like, well, yeah, don't you know the song? Purple Mountain Majesty. Maybe I just made that up. But anyways, so that's one card. And this one is also pretty glitterific. I use the shimmery black embossing powder, the shimmery white embossing powder, and water coloring. So um, yeah, so these are two of the cards. There's gonna be two more with this class. And this is the featured bundle class at the end of April. I will be doing it live as well, just like this on a Thursday night later in April. And then um, next week, Monday, for those of you looking for something to do, I'm going to be putting this kit together live. It's called the Three Cheers to You card, or Three Cheers for You card kit. This is a all-inclusive kit that has stamps, has um, embellishments. It has your um, dimensionals. Sherry, this is what I was telling you about earlier. It has a block. It has everything you need to make it and this cute, adorable little box to go with it. So um, I'm going to be putting this together live next Monday night. No, actually next Thursday night. And I have four of these available at my house that if anybody wants to sign up for this class and put it together with me, um, I have that available. And then there's one more class, uh, the um, in color um, retirement party. And I'm hopefully going to have it in person, but I also have it live on a Thursday night. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to do my online classes live on Thursday nights going forward for the rest of however long I can keep it up with. And then for the rest of us being safer at home, I'm going to be trying to do a Facebook live on how to make something cool or cutesy or a box or some 3D project. I'm gonna to try to do something anytime, like starting after 4.30 or five after I'm done working and just doing a 15 minute, like quick um, how to and putting something together. So, all right, let me look at my cheat sheet, see if I forgot anything. Nope, we talked about adhesives, remember that? I have them available. If you place an order with me, the shopping spree board is there. If you need catalogs, you let me know. Uh, the ornate bundle we went over and I shared with you my next classes. So. I've had a fun time stamping with you. I hope that you enjoyed yourself as well. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me in person, like through Facebook or through text or calling or emailing. I love chatting with you. If you have help, I want to help you so that you're not stuck. Um, also too, I watched on here to see if there's anything, um, anybody was posting questions, so I'll try to follow through. And also like and share this because I will be giving away a little ladybug stamp set to a lucky winner. So. All right, girls and boys, if you don't have anything else, I don't have anything else, and I hope that you enjoyed having the celebration Hoorah Rock class with me. All right, good night, everybody.